been doing this all along <laughs> what's wrong with us how are you i miss you so much i miss you too yeah hey can you turn your camera sideways or is that is it like propped up? oh that's right because we're um no i just need to figure out for the eye line oh that's the wrong one then now i'm looking at are you sure is that oh that's, that's pretty it. oh that's nice my house look at this oh. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. The living area. Look at the. It's really nice. And the, the moon comes in there, and then this is the the dogs have claimed this a part of the area, and then I have a little kitchen, just just enough space, you know, a little pantry, and then I could live in just this floor. There's a bedroom and a bathroom over here, but there's another whole upstairs floor with this gorgeous. The bedroom is as big as, as this room behind me. Like, yeah, even bigger with like a big wall of windows. It's so cheap here. This is a $600 house. It's 1,300 square feet. It was hand built and designed by an artist. And it's not just that. It's just, I, um, I was ready. I, I'd always wanted to live in another country. It's like you right now. I mean, if somebody had said to you 10 years ago, oh, you want to move upstate? You would have been. <laughs> it was like, not an option. You know? I mean, I think I would have might have said if I if I didn't have like twenty, you know, uh, uh, you know, ten ten other reasons why I can't. I mean, now I have just my mom here, who I ha I can't even see. You know, I don't want to take go somewhere depressing. You know, my what what might happen? But you know, I can't even visit her. I can't see they they FaceTime they let me FaceTime, but she's in in communicative. She's not communicating. She can't communicate. So it's it's really frustrating. Um, we have talked we have talked so often, all three of we girls, how glad we are mom passed before this. Because I mean seriously, I would rather have my mother gone gone than what you have, which is that she's somewhere yeah. and you can't. You can't. Yeah, and you know the only thing that was, it would take a little while. The bigger, the more time in between visits, the the harder it was to connect with her. As little as you got from the connection already. So now I'm just like so, you know, uncertain. I don't know. Like one day, if she'll, if she's alive, if I get back in there, uh, if she'll, if there'll be any kind of memory that she can re-trigger, you know. Yeah, but. Yeah. Uh, okay, if I could give you a piece of unsolicited advice, I saw my mother only twice a year during, you know, the, uh, when I lived in Hawaii, it was too expensive. And then once, uh, and once I had come here twice a year, I never, I, I cannot honestly say that I had any sense of her connecting with me. Right. As an individual, but I was the only person who could get her to smile and laugh. Wow. Yeah. So you'll, that's where you'll build it, Adam. That's what you'll have is there will be things that the caregivers will, will say to you, oh, she doesn't do that. That thing she just did with you, that, that way she just. Well, they already do that. Yeah. They were doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and so that will stay, but what she's going through right now, 
to be honest, if it were my mother where your mother is right now, I would say I would rather she went into some other realm and didn't know where she was and didn't know anybody than to be aware of everything that was going on around her. I, I, the, to me, the hardest people are the, are, are the people who are still compos mentos and they, they're, they're, but they're slippage, you know, and they're like, I wonder why my family isn't coming to see me anymore. Oh my God. My dad was, that's where my dad was at. Those, oh. My dad was, that's where he was, poor guy. Uh, I one day go over the, uh, over tequila or something. I'll go over the, the long story version of his last, the last months of his life, uh, you know, and I miss him. But I'm, I'm in a slightly better place already because, you know, those first weeks, it's been two months now, shockingly. Yeah. But the first day, weeks were really difficult because all you remembered and thought about were those last months and the, which were, was the worst period. But now I'm uh, able to start to reconnect with his full, longer, his full life, you know. And, um, and that's much better. That's much better. Because, you know, that's what, the way he should be remembered. And, you know or the memories I should have or, or dwell on. But man, those last months, that was rough. Do you feel I, him around, do you feel him around you at all? Or do you think he left I, us in the get out? I don't feel him here. I, I, this place, the last place apartment, really, he wasn't here that long. And um, he just, wasn't he was here, all he did was kind of watch TV here, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I can't, uh, my son was here for, for, you know, for a while before he went to Los Angeles and, you know, I put him in the bedroom. It's a one bedroom. And this was my bed. This is actually with several series of cushions, a really big firm bed actually turns out <laughs> without having to do a pullout. It's so I sleep really comfortably. So I said, you know, just take the bedroom because he's a teenager, you know, and uh, I don't, I don't want to know. I just, just go back there and enjoy your privacy. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. So, so anyway, you met him once at BAM. Uh, I did. Many years ago, yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, he left, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And um, I thought, okay, well, I went into the bedroom and I, I just, this kind of weight just started to go, actually fall on me. It was like, and I have not been able to go into, I have not been able to sleep in there. I can't do it. Yeah. I can't sleep in his bed. Yeah. You, just, you'll be stay out here. There's a comfortable, clean size bed in there, but I can't sleep on it. When you get a when you get your new place and you have things there that have his energy, yeah. then that would be a better feeling than being in the space that he would that he was in. We couldn't, mom. When when we moved her out of her house, it was a perfectly fine house. My sister at one point was it was you know like starving to death, and my older sister and and needed a place to live. She wouldn't go live there. She, I said, Vicky, it's a it's a free place to go live. She's like, no, 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 I don't want to be in that house. She was she was unhappy. She was delirious. She was right. she was. The, the, I don't want to be there. But we discussed this at Christmas. Now all of us, all of the things that we have that were hers, their energy is very strong and clean and loving now. Yeah. Now that 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 that. I think you'll 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 find when you get into your new space that you'll you'll find that the things that belong to him will resonate uh, in a real good emotional way to you. That's good. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. And the both for both for both of them in a way, you know, it's like uh, so. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's been quite a quite a few months. I'll tell you, they both got COVID. I found out on the same day, but they both. You know, my dad already was sort of. I think he was. It was I think he was going to go anyway because he had so had so many problems, and I'm I'm glad in a way uh, because he was just so unhealthy at the end. And then my mom also got. She kicked its butt like within days. She just, I don't know she, that 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 virus didn't stand a chance with her. So, <laughs> yeah. well, she had some little fever. Yes, she has COVID. So you know, you know, the only thing that happened, Cretion, and I would only tell this to you is that my mom became extremely restless uh, in this period of a couple of days where she actually slipped, she has guardrails on her bed, but she managed somehow to slip out. They found her uninjured, but on the floor near her bed. So she was trying to get out of bed or something. She wasn't, wouldn't sit still. She's normally very calm. She was, it was the exact time, I swear to God, it was the day my dad died. Wow. This is not, I'm not making it up. This is exactly no. what, 
So if that doesn't give you pause, I don't know what to tell you. I don't. Well, yeah, it, it, look at all these couples who are home. What, you want to say hi to Adam? Oh. Say hi. Hey, my name is Archie. Hi, Archie. <laughs> hi, Archie. Archie, who's that good boy? He's my baby. Yes, you're my baby. You know what? I, yes, I know I'm talking, as far as you're concerned, I'm talking to the thing that I watch and read news on. Your boy, understand Archie, <laughs> Archie, Archie. Oh, it's like, wow. <laughs> that's not confused. That's, that's not confused. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Hold on there. I'm, I'm sure you didn't break down. I just get a, get a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you move up, I, Adam, I'm really excited to hear you say this because um, I think we're all aware that if it, that the world is never going to be the same, and the U.S. for certain is not. And um, when I have found in my life, when things are coming from the outside that are changing really strongly, sometimes if I make a decision to change something also mm -hmm. then that empowers me to feel as though this is not that this is me this is me i, I have some power in this situation now and so that i, I would love to think of you upstate <laughs> really, if you get up this way you'll have to at some point someday you'll you'll, you'll have to visit god i don't even know i'm yeah. having my yeah. i'm Sorry. having my 70th birthday in december I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to go out and see my family. I'm like, interesting. The only, the, the hardest thing for me about, all, I keep getting all this good zen going and I keep getting, but underneath, and again, I would only say this to you, there's this part of me that is like, so what the fuck? I get a good, another good role in a movie and, and now the timing is such, it's never gonna turn into anything. I'm at the prime part of the time I have left and I'm sitting in my house in Mexico working on my Zen and instead of working on my work. And the only answer that resonates after that that makes me feel better is that everything that I do about me is reflected in my work and will later be reflected in my work. And I think it's the same way for artists everywhere a move away from a place that you have a lot of negative connotations to another place frees you to go inside and find those things and they'll do nothing but enrich you they'll do nothing but enrich us as artists my problem is i'm like okay so just you got to keep your shit together uh, un until you get a chance to do more work because you have this work inside you now you're going to have like a more vast understanding of, of humanity who basically I I kind of think we're devolving. I'm I'm pretty sure. <laughs> we made it all the way through evolution and we're on the backside going back. <laughs> and I've never been a person who would say oh I might think that but I would never say it out loud. <laughs> Isolation has made me the person who doesn't mask things anymore because I was always so nice. I was always very focused on being nice to everyone. And now I'm like, I just tell the truth. <laughs> My ex partner last night, it, we're, we're like, uh, you know, writing. We don't, I don't want to talk to him because there was a lot of um, emotional pain for me in it. I thought it was the one that I was going to go forever. And so there's still emotional pain for me. I absolutely support what he's done and that he needs to go out and do it but i don't want to hear his voice so we we text uh, daily like we're like best buds best friends okay. and right. he was texting me that he was going to have his cataract surgery done well he's up on a job in montana and he's working like 12 15 hours a day and really hard labor and stuff and he said i'm gonna have my cataract surgery done like one week before the job is over and but i'll take it real easy i won't ruin anything I won't, I won't, I know you're not supposed to lift or anything. I won't, I won't. And I just, in the old days, I would have been, oh, you know, okay, well, you'll need to be really careful. And now I'm like, hey, you know what? Do you, how much do you fucking know yourself? Because I fucking know you well. And I have seen you pick up things that no human should pick up because it was there and it needed to be picked up. You do that, you're going to ruin the surgery. You're going to have to do it again. Is that what you want? 
I mean, I'm like typing this. I went, wow, who is yeah. this person? Literally, you can tell. So when was this change? Is this since, since you're saying since, since you've been sheltered in or since you've been in yeah. uh, quarantine, you're, it's just taking this long? I would have thought you would have been like, I don't know, it seemed to me you would have, uh, I think you were probably halfway there anyway. Can I you was be, happy. Can you be nice and be, tell, just say the truth? Can't you do both? Yes, and I, and I never believed that because codependency. In codependency, if I accidentally say one wrong thing, then it's my fault. And, and, and a codependent person is always not wanting to be blamed for anything. You're always watching for ways that you can. And at the same time, when you see someone needing someone to sacrifice themselves and say, oh, oh, oh I bet that was my fault, you step right in. So it, it's, a, it's a tricky kind of a place, you know, that we explored a lot in Cresha. And I think it was a lot, I was working with a little of it in Freeland too, with an interesting kind of a twist. Um, but yes, you should, anybody should be able to say the truth and be nice and be kind and be doing, maybe doing the person a favor. As it turned out in this case, he wrote me back and he said, you know, I respect your opinion and you do know me and you're right. And let me look at the timeline again. And I was like, oh my God, maybe all those times that I like didn't oh, say sure. things, maybe I, I should have. Yeah. No, you weren't doing anybody <laughs> any favor. It's just swallowing no. that up. No, least of all your own nope. self. Yeah. Rather. yeah. Uh, we and, live and learn. We, we yeah. live and learn. The hardest part of Freeland is to watch in terms of your character is, is that period where, you know, she's becoming desperate. It's hard to watch that because we all know that side of ourselves and how, you know, just how, un how it, hard it doesn't serve, it never serves you, but, you know, to start bending to the will of everybody else because you're feeling desperate, you know, but, it, and you feel like this is what you have to do, but it doesn't ever work out. And, and people, it, it's real, it's very interesting. I, um, I've known in my life two people who were growers up in that, in that area, two women who were growers. I've known more than that, but two, two women who were friends. And in both cases, um, it hardened the fuck out of them. I mean, they, they, they went there as the, the genuine loving hippie chick and they ended up warriors. Uh, in protection of their of their land and their children and their crop and their and one of them finally she lives down here now she finally walked away she literally she still had children aged children and when she talked to her partner and the partner said this is our business that what are you talking about you know and she's like I don't want our children living as renegades and outlaws I don't want them feeling this fear I don't want them thinking when they hear a helicopter that they, you know, I don't, I don't want this for them. And he was like, well, fuck you. What do you think's putting the food on the table? And she literally left. And she's still, she's years later, very close with her children because they understand what her, what she was about. Some of them stayed and took over the farm. Oh, wow. Some of them left also. Oh. Now the other woman I know, she enlisted her children from the day they could crawl. They had a job. They were working the land, just like any farmer would. She saw herself as a real renegade rebel. Um, it, it, you know, it, it, for her, the system was broken and this is what you do. And she was very proud of the way she handled it. But man, she was cold as a stone in her heart. She, she had just like anything soft or, or feminine or giving or yielding was gone for her. And, and I kind of wanted to take those women and show a little bit of both of those kinds of reactions. And um, the desperate... I was very proud of her as I, as I crafted her. I was proud of how long it took her to get this. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted very much for her to, it looks like stubborn and it looks like resistant, but it was, to me, it was resilient. It was confidence. I've pulled this out before. 
I can do it again. It was the shit that gets women to be owners of businesses and in higher position. You got to have a little bit of that. But then once it, once the system had really just taken away all of her options, then I, then I let it go. I let it, I let it happen. The, the rest of the stuff. And, um, I, I thought when I first started working with them, the script was still a work in progress and they, they really honed in once they knew that, 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 that they had me and that we were going to be working together. It's like they honed in on what they felt that I could do. And I was very proud of them for deciding that. And so I gave it, you know, the 500% that I could give. Um, because that's what a woman does in a situation like that. Real women, when push comes to shove, they're balls to the wall. More so, I hate to say this, it's, it's gender uh, uh, biased, but I have seen more men fall apart under pressure than I have seen women fall apart under pressure. Um, so. <laughs> Somebody is about to break down. I, I have to agree with <laughs> <laughs> You're always about to break down. It's I know, part well, of your charm, Adam. Well, no. It's, it's yes, it is. Because you always you. survive. You always survive. You always pull through. You're a strong, sensitive man. And thus, you're aware of realities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, well, I, most of my crying is, uh, is watching. It's probably... I'm so, I'm very, very, uh, obviously raw these days, but um, just, you know, watching the news, I, I start tearing up because, uh, you know, some, when I see people who are expressing their rage, you know, you've seen those clips, I'm sure, uh, where people are just pushed to the, to the edge of what they can handle, you know, and they're out on the protesting or they're, uh, whatever, you know, and, and I'm watching these people and, and I, I just get so moved by it. I just, you know, we're under so much stress here in the States, you know, I mean, or, well, I mean, not, I shouldn't even say in the States, but, you know, this country just after three or four years of this time that we're living in with such hate and, 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 and ignorance, it's just, it's it's almost too much, you know. And then uh, then when all of a sudden things start bubbling and, and, and there's this there's a great feeling about all the protests that are going on. But then you see also, you know, the pushback. <laughs> it's a friend of mine who never calls. That's Always. <laughs> Why are you calling? Because now I'm worried, you know, because he's, he's never, he always texts me and- yeah, No, never, check it. I don't think check he's ever, it. I just checked. I, I, I wonder if it was a butt dial. Anyway, um, I have to, I think tomorrow, help him pick up his futon, because he ah. <laughs> had to drive over to where he is. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so I, I was starting to ramble anyway, but you get what I'm saying, it's like, uh, it puts it in mind, I'm like, you know, I'm really having these res strong responses and I'm realizing, you know, we're living under the COVID and under uh, uh, the protests now and the hate of the, the you know, the, 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 of this administration that's been going on endlessly, you know, all of the negativity and the negative energy. And then there's, you know, just the pressure of being stuck inside and not knowing what tomorrow is going to be like or next week. And then on top of it, there people are dying and everybody's losing family members or friends and, you know, I've lost my father and uh, can't get in to see my mother. So, you know, it's just, it's a lot, but you know, you you do rely on your fiber and your foundation. And, um, you know, I feel in some ways stronger than ever, you know. Uh, there you go. It's the, it's, it's, it's the perfect storm of all the all the bad things that could come together at one time and make people feel powerless right okay. and, and then and then people who have felt powerless for all these generations are so completely justified when you look at the face of that fucking cop with his hands in his pockets 
swearing at the camera while he kills a man. You know, when you add all that together to the feeling it trapped and feeling no, and not knowing it, da, 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 it's the perfect storm. But the image that is interesting is in the perfect storm, if you remember, yes, the time the boat was climbing the wall of water was always the, and then it gets to the top and then there's this and then whoa. But on the park down, if you're gonna live, then you've made it through. Mm -hmm. And and right now with our country, I think none of us have any idea if we're gonna live, if we're gonna make it through. And and I've never had that doubt. Even when I was protesting against the Vietnam War, when I you know when I was young, uh, when I was doing civil rights, all that stuff. Never had a doubt. Never had a doubt in the moment. In, in, in the world that this country would make it through and all, and and beat down the evil and the, all that junk but um i've been living like you say i've been living for three years every time everything that happens i'm like no they can't this can't no they can't this could, it, it just keeps getting worse it's the perfect storm we're we're and the sad thing is i don't think we're at the top yeah, I don't think we're at the teeter totter point yet. Maybe not. And, yeah. and and the kids, you know, you you've got a kid in the world. How old? He's going to be sixteen now, or? Oh, he is six. He just turned sixteen. I thought so. Yeah, what a great kid. Uh, and and I I just have to take a quick moment. You, this is not a business, but I have to say, when you post the videos of you and your ex singing, I thought. This is a woman who manages to be hostile even when she's singing music. <laughs> Isn't that horrible? She had like a little kind of a hostile edge to her. <laughs> well, I, was... <laughs> I didn't, I, 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 you know, not all of it. I just caught it a couple times, a little flash, and I thought. Ginger yeah, because she's very, uh, oh, she puts on a, uh, an act, you know, she's an actor and in the, uh, in that kind of um, theater background type of way, you know, like, so it's, that's, that was the, you know, this is all off, off the record, right? But this was, uh, you know, so it, that's the hardest part of, uh, of living with her is, uh, is just the performative side of her, you know. Okay, I, okay. Yeah. That yeah. yeah, she's just putting on, but she calls me like every day to ask to see how I'm doing, you know. Yeah. So the de the deeper stuff, the parenting together, the 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 deep stuff is abiding, and that I mean that in in these times we have to look for what abides. Yeah. You know? And okay, a freeland point that I think is interesting. Um, I don't know if you've talked to Frank yet, but um, no, no, that's supposed to happen Friday, I think. Okay. Frank and I work together on uh, bonding these two people um, and and uh, Kate and Mario were very open to the concept that if we the more we could show that they were they were long time buds they had an abiding sense of trust and and security and 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 uh, comfort around each other right the the more it would serve the story. And um, that is one of those things that I think runs through relationships with exes. And, and, and Frank and I talked about this. It, they, we, we decided that, that even though they'd never been together, because obviously the age gulf, it's almost like they were the good exes. And the good exes are the, are the ones that you know will always have your back, no matter how much they might have screamed into your face when you were in the middle of breaking up mm -hmm. they're gonna always be there for you and always have your back and that is that's what we wanted to create for those two characters together and i think i think we did you know uh, a really good job with it <laughs> well that's why you can stand in front well i can't give away the ending but there's a moment in the at the end you know where there's a bit of a a, a confrontation between the two of you not just the two of you, but primarily with the two of you. And, and you know, he stands right in front of you there, regardless of the, uh, 
you know, situation and um, which I think can only come from knowing, having a, that bond that you were describing because anybody else would <laughs> run for the, running for the woods right away. Yeah. And he says, this is me. This is me. Right, right, right. Yeah. And that, 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 that's what, you know, that's what breaks through in, in times, in the worst of times, somebody who will stand in the face of your ire and say, this is me. Well, they have, to, they have to take you for the, at your worst. Yep. Yep. As much as, you know, the best is easier. <laughs> when, we, when we first started working on the script, mm -hmm. I thought, no, the, stakes, the stakes are not really high enough for most people that, uh, who cares? It's an, it's an old woman and she's going to lose her livelihood. Hey, it happens to a lot of people. But the more that they tuned it and the more we infused it with the relationships, the more I think we saw that people who would care about anybody suffering through this situation would care. Of course, we had absolutely no idea mm -hmm. that the world was about to change in a way that millions of people are on the threshold of losing everything that they've worked for their entire lives through something of no fault of their own. No responsibility. They didn't make a mistake. They didn't do a bad choice. They didn't, they can't, they can't they find where to, to put it. Huh? They did everything they're supposed to do. That's right. Well, and, and, this, and, and it still happens. And I, that to me is one of the incredible ironies of this movie, not getting a chance to be seen right now, because I think that right now, <laughs> would be a time that it could really connect with all of those people who are kind of feeling that sense of powerlessness in the face of something that was impersonal and not directed at them, but had a, right. a catastrophic, so, catastrophic effect. And for listeners, we'll say that, you know, you're a grower. This is your livelihood. It's been your livelihood. And um, you, uh, of course, it's all goes down the drain pretty much overnight once uh, marijuana becomes um, legalized, right? And it's all of a sudden now it's, it's run by government and uh, you're all of a sudden find yourself uh, in a whole new world where um, nobody wants to work with you anymore or buy from you. And in fact, even, even beyond that, the legal growers are wanting the farms. They they want these established farms. They want they want to be able to step in and take over people's places. And the government that has been fighting with these people for all these years in a kind of a veiled way um, is taking that opportunity to legally run these people out of business by imposing um, fines and and penalties that that. Um, nobody, no small farmer could meet with. And, you know, whereas, you know, the corn farmers are getting bailed out by the government, you know, the, the government was not really eager to help the pot farmers. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's, a, it, 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 it's, uh, it, it really happened. It really happened in all the states that, uh, when I was not young, every, let's just say this, every, every, um, every joint I ever smoked when I was young, came from a place that where it was grown by someone you know very like this woman in a situation very like her right. and all of those people all at once ended up on the wrong side of a, not just the law but the enforcement of the law and the big business the big big ag that was coming in wanting their land and wanting wanting their crops and um they all they all went down or they or they legalized you know i want you to know though what you got lucky in one regard or freeland did right because you guys did do festivals some festivals. We, we got into a lot of festivals we didn't get to play in any you didn't you know, know. But, there no, was our, first, our world premiere was South 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 South. South. 
Oh, what's up? Okay, yeah. So you yeah. just oh no, we we had a great showing of festivals we got in. We were getting awards from festivals um, that that you know that showed them virtually. A lot of the festivals had their juries already in line. Oh, I know. And, right. Yeah, so they still so, went ahead with they still went ahead with jury awards. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's um. It, yeah. Yeah. No, I don't. I didn't mean to pour me. Uh, no. 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 Uh, no. What I'm just thinking is that I think you know because I I saw some reviews and which is also very helpful. So, you know. No, we we got very lucky. The reviewers were had already watched the film. Right. The South by. Right. It was the reviews were ready to be written. It wasn't like we were asking them any favors. They had already seen the film. They wanted to write about it. Yeah. We no, got. You're, we you're, got major major lucky <laughs> yeah that's nice some nice uh ink yes so. we had good ink good good it, vibes the whole yeah. the whole the whole production was such a you know i guess i'm really really lucky that the two films that i've done that will be my legacy uh, if covid gets me tomorrow um uh, were family um family experiences where the 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 crew and the cast all lived together and bonded and we and and meals together and and you know on the location of freeland we 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 had one the major location we had one outhouse and and everybody shared it you we had a little basket you put in the path so mm -hmm. that if you were changing your clothes in the outhouse or doing else else lives in the outhouse the basket was in the path you know everybody using one wooden toilet seat in a in an outhouse that is family that is how you make a movie that has a real feeling of authenticity and caring and 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 group effort wow well i i hope i think that we will somehow manage to get the word out and get a lot of people to see the film you know yeah if we don't know, that... we really don't know what what anything is going to be like in terms of the cinema just have no idea. Boy, crazy, huh? Boy, talk about, yeah, again, that precipice thing. It's like, we, we, we don't know. You and I, I, I am, I, I have to say, I'm in, the, I'm in the catbird seat as far as it goes for being an actor. I got a long career. I earned a pension. <laughs> I retired. I live somewhere on my pension and social security, somewhere I love somewhere where I'm embraced by nature. And if the world normalizes and there's more work, I'll find it. And if it doesn't, then it's just like I said in can. If this turns out, I'll be, I, I'll love it. If it doesn't, I'll be in my hammock. <laughs> <laughs> and, and here I am in my hammock. <laughs> my hammock, two story hammock. <laughs> Anything else? What have we not uh, touched on? You ask questions. So, you, uh, well, how did this, how did you get it? I'm just curious. It's a most typical question, but I'm, so you did Cresha, um, which is already like, what, seven, six, seven years ago now? Uh, 2014, 15 was our, was our, uh, 15 was our opening okay. year, so. Not that bad. Yeah. And then you did, uh, I think you did one, did some, some television, right? Or episodic, didn't you? Yeah, I did uh, for sci fi, uh, Channel Zero. Great series, really. That Nick Antosca, the guy who had, had written and worked on Hannibal, and uh, just a, a genius guy, and he hired genius directors for each. Uh, and it was a six parter, and he gave me the dream job. I was a, I was a, um, an elder warrior, I was a woman who was got the chance to chase Rutger Hauer with a gun and, and challenge vampires. And it was, it was, I was a, a real, I was, I opened a door with an ax. I mean, it, it, it was a dream for an older actress to get to do that. I did that. Yeah. So actually Freeland, I, I read Freeland for the first time when I was in LA for um, the, uh, to, to get the Cassavetes award for Cresha at the independent spirits. And um, so that was, you know, in, in the beginning. <laughs> and they weren't ready, and I didn't think the script was ready. And I said, "Get back to me, you know, later. Keep, I'm interested, but keep me posted." It's it went through several iterations, um, but it never was 
it wasn't cooking. It, the, uh, the, oven, it, it, the oven wasn't on, preheated, ready, ready for the project to happen. And then while I was in Canada shooting um, the sci-fi, um, they were ready. And I was going to go right from that shoot to, to that. Uh, and that was 2017 or 18? Uh, 17, I think. And, uh, and then one of their other characters, because of a family crisis, fell out. And they kicked it around and they did a lot of soul searching and they thought, so what if instead of a mother-daughter story, which is what it was, it's the woman. And it's risky to hang a, a picture on an older, an older woman. Um, in this case, um, I think that we all felt like we, by bringing in some, some other characters that, with interest, that it was worth giving it a try. And so they, they um, quickly gathered, marshaled all the forces. It was about a year after we were originally supposed to shoot. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And, and uh, it, yeah, it, it, it's interesting. I, um, mm -hmm. I, I, I guess there were times during which I thought, oh, they're losing their window. The, the legalization thing is, but the legalization thing just kept getting weirder and weirder. And then when they contacted me and they're like, okay, so people are getting letters now saying that if they don't comply with all this stuff, that they're going to have to pay fines of like 10, 20, $30,000 a day. And I was like, what? And like my back just went completely up. And I was like, this is for real. This is really happening. And they said, yeah, the County is doing this. And I said, write it in. <laughs> They already had, you know. So the what I thought would be by then old news just kept getting more and more pertinent. Mm -hmm. And so there we go. That was our that was when our window opened and the oven was preheated. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> wow. It's a great story though. Yeah. You know. Um, and I'll be talking to the directors. Uh, tomorrow and then Frank on Friday. Good, excellent. So maybe as it gets closer to the next phase, which would be when it premieres, however it premieres, uh, you know, maybe Lily. Good, she'd love to be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah, she's yeah. terrific. Yeah, I actually suggested, I, I probably, maybe I shouldn't say this. Maybe, okay, well, I'll make this off the record. I suggested Lily. Um, Cause she oh, yeah. and I met, in, in, yeah, we met in Montana. When uh, she had uh, the, the Kelly Riker film was, was at the Montana Film Festival, the first year that these three hippie dudes who run a, a, a vintage theater in Missoula, Montana, and they started the, the Montana Film Festival, because all the, who knew, all the film festivals in Montana were like about wildlife and documentaries and stuff like that. And these guys, they have this, they have this uh, historic theater that people are crazy for coming and watching old films. So they started this festival, it was the first year. They, they had a lot of money from donors. They brought, they offered me the trip. They brought Lily in and, and uh, she was already actually kind of tapped in there. She was teaching some classes and stuff like that. And she had me come in and talk to a class that she was teaching. And um, we just bonded really, really strongly. And um, when I read, the last pass of the script and they were like almost ready to go. They were ready to cast. And I thought, you know, we shouldn't there be an indigenous person in this? <laughs> in point of fact, most of the, um, the uh, oh, what is it they call them? Oh my God, I can't believe it in my brain. Um, the migrants who pick, there's a, there's a, there's a tricky term for it. Um, that m most of them are, are not indigenous. Most of them are just, you know, hippie white kids that, that, you know, from wherever in the country they've lived. And, and um, they already were looking to, to bring a little bit of diversity in with Cameron's role. Um, and uh, I said, you know, what about Lily? And they're like, oh my God, well, we, didn't, we wouldn't have thought, we, you know, we didn't, wouldn't know how to get to her. And I'm like, <laughs> but. <laughs> Get you to her. <laughs> Serendipity. 
Indeed, indeed, yeah. Wow. All right, honey boy. Well, if you think of anything else that um, that you need to know, or once you talk to the others, if there's a, any sound bite or anything that you want from me, just let me know. It will. Okay. I'm so glad it's been uh, too long, and and um, it's so terrific to uh, to bring people back. You know, it's the best part of doing this thing is, you know, just the the the, the roads div diverge and then converge again. It's pretty nice. Yeah, you're gonna, you know, you understand, and I'm not saying this just to, you know, suck up, because why would I suck up to you? You're the crying man. Um, uh, you're gonna be a part of, a big part of when things start to get shaken out and everything is kind of tenuous and people are trying to, and the indie world is trying to figure out where do we stand in this, but how do we, da 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 da. I think you're going to be able to be a big part of that by giving people a little bit of a voice about what what their what the path as they see it is, because I know you know like I, I with Trey I'm like you know wow <laughs> interesting what next now huh and he's like doing meetings with people he's he's you know people are submitting scripts to him he's looking at these it, all this stuff and then he says but you know we don't know nobody knows nobody knows any of what's going to happen it's you know it, there's a lot of um there's a lot of pie in the sky and mm -hmm. there's a lot of doom and gloom and i'm sure the future of our industry will end up falling somewhere between those two points but once that starts to show itself then i think that you're going to be uh, able to give people give a voice to some of the people who are um working it i have if I had to bet money right now, I honestly would not put a bet on how it'll all, whether the studios will come out on top and the indies will die, whether the indies will come out on top and the studios will die. I could not say. My guess is, is yeah, it would just be so terrific if there was just a certain, you know, space for everybody. Well, we were kind of getting to a place where there was, right? I mean, that's, it feels to me, know. maybe naive but it felt to me like i was seeing more genuine indie people and their products um involved in the the bigger awards and the and the and the bigger uh the bigger audiences and the and the and of course you know there you go like are those the devil are the are the big budgets of the <laughs> I don't know. Well, well, the good thing about what we're going through now, though, is it seems like, you know, there'll be, if this were to go on for a couple more years in terms of at least the film industry I'm talking about, um, then, you know, we're going to see a lot more independent films. You're not going to see a lot of big, big budget films for a little while. So, you know, maybe with a breather, people realize, oh, uh, you know, these, it's great to see other stories and other storytellers, you know, that's all, that they make it to a broader audience, that's all. That, that, That'd be people, nice. That'd people be nice. might feel nourished by that, you know. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you a secret, but it really has to be a secret, okay? Okay, just, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, just before all this, literally, the week, no, two weeks, a week and a half before South By was canceled, I was in these, big secret talks for <laughs> a big project shooting in Europe. I would have been in Europe for two months. For, yeah, I would have been in Europe May and June. <laughs> and I had this fabulous, I, I turned in you know, my tapes. I got this incredible response. I had a fabulous like um, two hour conversation with the directors you know, like a Skype or a Zoom or whatever it was. And uh, and they were like, yeah, yeah, no, we're, you're, we're, you're, you're it for us. And, and we're going to, we're putting your, putting your name on the table as for this role. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, they're like telling me this and I'm thinking, oh, maybe they're bullshitting me. And the next day, the call from my agent, my manager, casting director called me and said, they put, you know, they put you, da, 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 da. And, Boom, all this starts. And I, of course, I haven't heard a word from anybody. I have no idea. No word. What, what, 
no word is no news is good news in that regard that you know it's just a delay that's it, it, it possibly but i would have thought that, that that if yeah i don't know it's a, it was a it, it was a big it wasn't a mega budget i don't think you I don't, I don't really know but the the thing about it that i loved was that it it was um i had a connection to I have to be careful what I say. I had a connection to the history of the of the project way, way, way back. And um, that they didn't know I had that connection to. So, yeah, I can't say anymore. <laughs> You're too smart. You'll figure it out. I will. If, they, if, yep. if it gets made, I will let you know. And, and then I will say, that's the project I was talking about. I'll figure it out. <laughs> you know, I didn't give you enough to... I'll talk to Pedro. <laughs> no, you, you wouldn't. I didn't tell you where in Europe. I didn't. Nah, you won't get it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right, honey bun. Um, yeah. Travel safe today. And I hope your friend, whatever your friend is needing. And I'm going to start visualizing you in upstate. I'll send you and, and, what I promise. Uh, I wish I will. I could send you the the place I'm going to. I, actually, I think that'll be the probably best solution for a while because um, the the uh, other person it would be a share for just for a while, but um, it's a house for one thing on the property, so that's nice. And she sent me a, a double a photo of double rainbow across the uh, you know nice. the enormous meadow that is and you know just this enormous meadow across this the road and and later on she's moving and then you'd have the whole place no, I, i'm gonna i i have to get i I'm, i was looking at an apartment for of my own yesterday and i'm waiting for a friend of mine's apartment to open up uh which that's that's what i'm hoping will happen this fall does it have outdoor area and, and yeah it's, it's or or? the one well which one yeah the the one that would be the long term yeah, yeah, it's got a, it's got a porch, and you know, so yeah. But if it keeps getting postponed, then I will have to find my own apartment, you know, uh, elsewhere. But you know, I have time, and I have a large area of land, or of you know, the part of the state I could look at. I mean, it doesn't have to and, be. And once you're up there, you're yeah. going to see and hear about things that you're not going to hear about in the city. Yeah, and you know, um, I think a lot of the people that are scurrying up there are probably going to scurry back. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, you know, like I think a lot of people are going up there for, for like the summer. I, um, I don't. I, I'm not even sure. I'm just talking. I, I have no idea. I'll, I'll figure. Well, it out. no. I mean, I, 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 I'm not living in the world, but I am reading a lot about the world. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there are lots and lots and lots of people uh, just trying to get somewhere elsewhere where they can be more outside and more. Sure, sure. Um, for the summer, so, yeah. the epicenter. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I, I kept thinking about you guys, and then, and I was, you know, Adam Kirsch. I was like, oh god. Um, there was a part of me that was like, go, go, go to your family's house, and then I thought, no, maybe not. Maybe it's better if he stays in the city, and right, you know. But yeah. I always worry about him because I worry I he's going to emails from him. You know, when uh, I will get off. Of, you know, Lynn. Did you know Lynn Shelton? I did not know her, but I know people who did. Just, I mean, okay, so horrible yet, yet so sweet that she had that relationship with Mark mm -hmm. in the last bits of time, and they were so happy, and she was so happy, and she felt so. Mm, mm -hmm. uh, and it's content and accomplished in in things uh, but right. it's still and you know she wait. go ahead yeah i was just way too way too early for her to go yeah and she actually directed an episode of my ex you know her my singing partner's uh tv show so she, we, she was here you know coming to get the kids when we got the news that lynn shelton died so she you know even though i know lynn over like eight nine years uh Ugh. Uh, I mean, not, we're not close or anything, but I've known her over that span of time. And, um, uh, but I found, got the news and I was, you know, Karen, she, she worked with her on the morning show, you know, this Apple series. Yeah. And, you know, Adam, I mean, that's part of why yeah. I was worried about Adam. 
I, was I know, and I'm, I've got two emails from Adam in my that came in because I, I I'm doing a, a show, an episode devoted to Lynn. Good. I have on uh, several people that were very close to her, very close. Uh, I can't get to Mark Duplass, although my she, he's on the same show as Karen. So, but if I was a little bit, if I was wait a minute, I did a I just did a podcast for Mark Duplass. What? Uh, it, it, kind of as a favor, it was it like a no money thing that that, he, that some young filmmaker that he's like a script. That he's, uh, yeah, it was a script. Uh, to be honest, I, I, in in my mind, I think it, it was something they might have been kicking around to be a feature. And Duplass w was kind of championing this mm -hmm. producer director team. And then when this all happened, he said, "Look, you just gotta do whatever you can do. What can you do? You have right. a script that you can make into a podcast." And and so they made right. it into one. They yeah, were very that's happy. a good idea. I mean, I mean, if you have good backing, it's a good idea. It's an immediate source of distribution for your idea. I mean, um, you know, it could always be made into a, you know, a film later on anyway. Yeah. So would would it help you? Is there any way I could help you with him with the shelf thing? Or do you think he wouldn't do it for anybody? I don't think he would do it. But I'm speaking out of my butt. I don't have any idea if he would. I have his email even. But, um, I, you know, I've met him uh, once or twice. Uh, but, I, you know, he's not going to know me. But he's working with my ex-wife. You know, they're, they're in the cast together. So he... Yeah. So the idea was, I, before this happened and they went on hiatus, the idea is that when I come out there to visit, probably she'll just say, hey, Mark, you should do Adam's podcast. And, and, and then I can remind him of all of our common friends and everything like that. But I don't think... Oh, so so you're, you're, you're not in a hurry to do it. You just are going to do it. I'm doing it over uh, the next couple of weeks. I've interviewed two people. I invited Adam because he's just a good friend of hers. And Josh, do you know Josh Leonard? I don't know him, but I know of him, yeah. Yeah, he and Mark, of course, did Hump Day, which was a lot Oh, of wait, Josh, Josh was in this podcast. Oh, he's also oh. in that, too. Yeah, I saw him on a little picture. Oh, okay. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. That's a great project. So uh, yeah, so it's uh, yeah. So I, Josh, and then you know, I have a lot of friends who have you know, uh, are friends with Dupla. You know, like it's a small circle. Most of them are love what I do, and they're very receptive. And I'll reach out to them, and they'll respond immediately. And um, I forget why I was trying. Oh, I forget why I was trying to reach. Oh, I was doing a, the fundraiser for a couple of years ago, and I just would. I was. I was hoping maybe Duplass would do a little bit of a you know, like a little promotional thing for it. I don't remember. But I, so I reached out to a couple of uh, people and they, they gave me his email, but you know, they said, don't tell, let him know. <laughs> yeah, he wouldn't, he wouldn't do a fundraiser, but he might do the Shelton thing. Right. And if, if you feel like, if you feel like asking him and you want to email him and just say, I was interviewing Creasy Fairchild today and I, and I mentioned the Lynn Shelton thing, and I said that, you know, Josh, da, 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 da. Josh said, is doing it, and Megan Griffith is doing it, and, you know, uh, 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 Ben Kasalka is doing it. I mean, these are yeah, so, in circle, yeah, close to circle of friends, so it's not. Yeah, if you, if you feel like doing it, this is your entree to why you would reach out to him, is that you were just interviewing me. And his name came out. And you could say I, I, that I did a pod. I, I mentioned the podcast I did for him, and you were like, "Oh, I'm trying to reach him for the show." Thing. If you want to use it, right. there, you, yeah. Use and it. Then I have the connection with Karen, and I have there's there's enough. Yeah, yeah. It would be good to get him on, but you know, yeah. Okay. All right, Doodle. Be safe. Send me a, send me your response to the house. I, I'm gonna fantasize because I don't like an apartment for you. I want you in a little house. So I'm going to start fantasizing that while you're up there in this house, that you find some little like little cottage or something where you don't have to do maintenance and shit. It's like behind someone's big house or yeah. something. The little place and, I at yesterday was like a little cottage, but it, it's kind of run down and there's no laundry. Yeah, see, you need a good place. You need a, a real good place that is, has a lot of light for the winter so you don't get like totally depressed and, you know, put a pistol to your head. That's never, <laughs> that's not a thing. <laughs> I mean, that's not that's not in your makeup I just, you know cry. I just cry and let it let it flow you know you know what is funny when this covid stuff i haven't told anybody this when this covid stuff started there was a part of me you see my my dad um my dad drowned in his in his lungs that's how he died he had scleroderma and his lungs turned to fiber so they wouldn't go 
like this anymore. And when we were hospicing him, he was unable to breathe and on oxygen. And so when I started reading about this thing, this disease, I just went, there's not a worse way that I would want to die. And, and I got totally freaked out. I mean, I went into, I really got totally freaked out. I started to like be very panicky and, uh, da, 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 da. and then I, I Capricorn stepped in. I got, oh, okay, here you need a citron. I have four months of dog food. I, da, 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 da. you know, I, I went into that whole thing and I got all that done. I got all the dogs taken care of. I got all my legal stuff taken care of. I wrote notes to the, I, I talked to the doctor here. I got him to send me a nebulizer. I got all my ducks were in a row. Everything was great. And the, I looked at myself and I said, you don't have anything to take yourself out with. If you start to get this and you're alone here and you know your dogs are going to watch you suffer for a week or 10 days or two weeks or whatever, if you had something, a pill that you could take, it's the first time in my entire life that I, the idea of killing, I believe we all have the right to kill ourselves. Oh my God. And I've always told people if I had a if I had a terminal illness and I knew I wasn't going to make it, I would go have a good time and max my credit cards, <laughs> take myself out, you know. But I, it really was the first time I ever thought I wish I had a way to. And then I thought of a way, and and so I went, oh, okay, well that's a little complicated. You have to be in better shape than, but you can do that, okay. And then I relaxed again. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Well, you had to uh, process that pure, clearly. Yeah, I did. I absolutely did. There's been a lot of processing going your on. Dad. Huh? You're still grieving your yeah. dad. I know. When I asked you if your dad was around, after my dad, he stuck around the longest time. And I think it was because he really, as he was going through the tunnel, he really got the ways that he had not. He'd been a good provider, but he hadn't been emotionally present for anybody in his life. And I, he really stuck around, really stuck around. When my mom passed, she was so over that waiting to die thing and being in the nursing home. She was so over it. She was gone. And I asked my other sisters, I was like, okay, so do you have dreams? And my dad, I, I still have dreams that I feel of my dad actually visiting. And, uh, and we're all like, nothing, zero, not a whisper of contact. And she was the one that we were all said, how will I live after my mother dies? How will I ever live after our mother dies? And then when she passed, we had done all of our work about it. And we had loved on her so long and so hard like you do with your mom when you go to see her. And whether she knew it or not, that's the ice cream truck, you hear that? That is a guy driving by with the most delicious, big wooden tubs with a wooden thing on the top of wow. fresh ice cream. And I signed off on March 10th because people stand over the tubs and breathe into it and sneeze into it and hands are, and I just thought, I'm not going to die from ice cream. So every time he goes by now, I'm like, oh, I'm I'm ice cream. I'm ice cream. so I'll have my ice cream later. Anyway, that's why I asked that question about your dad. When they're ready, yeah. when they're really ready, they usually, they just go, they go free. Right. You know, they're, they're, he's free now, you know, and my dad was not free. My dad was like, he was acting like, oh, it was really interesting. You're, your soul is supposed to be smarter than that. But it was like, he was still, I have to stare around and be responsible. You know, you know this story. I'm sorry. I'm taking, uh, you have two minutes. You know this story, but maybe you don't. Do you know that Robin went to see John Edwards, the psychic? Do you know this story? I'm not sure. Okay. Before, before Krisha got made, before Nika died, the last summer that Nika was with us, so six months before she died and, and he wrote the movie. Mm -hmm. um, we're sitting outside on the back porch uh, and Nika 
turns to Robin and says, you know, Bumpa always loved you. He knew you, you thought he didn't. That's what we all call my dad. And Robin goes like this and turns to her and goes, what? She said, Bumpa comes to see me. And he told me that you never thought he loved you, but he does love you. Okay, Robin, who had for years held Nika at arm's length because she's a professional therapist. She understands addiction. She absolutely knows when this person is using people, manipulating people, you know, all of that. Robin falls into tears and she and Nika sit holding each other and rocking each other and crying. All right. Robin, that they finish that cry and Robin says, oh my God, I can't, I can't believe it. I have to get, I have to get ready. I have to drive back to Houston. I've, I've got to go to this thing tonight. And we're like, what thing? And she said, well, I have a client whose daughter committed suicide. Um, she was, uh, had an eating disorder and she, a, two, a teen suicide. And she said, and she's convinced that that psychic John Edwards can, can reach her daughter. And um, she said she had, um, she and her husband were both going to go and her husband has the flu. And she called me this morning saying, do you want to come and, and take his ticket? Okay, so and I'm telling you that background so you understand. The guy didn't know Robin was coming. There, there wasn't like her name wasn't on a list of people who paid for tickets so they could do research on her. She drives back to Houston. She goes to see John Edwards. She's sitting in the thing. She's got the notepad to take notes with a friend. Anything that John Edwards says. My dad comes through in a reading and will not leave John Edwards alone until, until he calls out and says, okay, this is a very persistent guy who keeps bugging me. His name is Bud. And Robin's like, oh. <laughs> and she doesn't, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't, she doesn't, like, oh. And he's, you know, he's here, he's, he, it's like he wants to talk to, to somebody here, he needs to tell you about your son. And your son is uh, young and he's, uh, he wants to, uh, uh, he's a writer. Someone in the family is a writer, and uh, not the son. The son is something. Someone in the family is a writer. And Ro Robin is like, and the, the, the friend is going like this to her, you know? And Robin just goes like this, and she hands the pen and the notepad to her friend, and she goes, oh. <laughs> and the guy proceeds to tell her that her son, when he's 25 or 26, which is how, Trey was 25 when we shot Cresha and 26 when we went to South by. Mm -hmm. That he's going to have to work really, really hard. And, but, but his dream is going to come true. And he is going to be, he's going to be very, very good at what he does. He's going to be a success. And uh, she needs to keep supporting him. And she needs to keep telling, telling him it's okay. And she needs to keep helping him because he's going to make this happen. And someone else in the family is going to help. Someone, he goes, someone who writes. And she goes, well, my sister, Krisha writes, but, you know, just like journals and stuff like that. He said, no, no, I don't know who it is. But the, someone in the family, maybe more than one person in the family is going to help. Someone is going to, someone is going to give him a story. And that was Nika course who gave him the story mm -hmm. and 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 he said uh oh okay and he's also he's he says to tell you and then he mentioned robin's mother-in-law who's dead and he mentioned her by her nickname which he never knew only her husband ever called her that nickname and then he mentioned our aunt ruth who was one of his favorite people in the world. And he said, she wants me to say hi to you and tell you that she loves you all and send, and send her, her, her love to your sister. Well, I was the one who was the closest to her. And John Edward said, she's wearing like a, uh, I see her in like a uniform, like a, and she, does, she works with like uh, telephones or something like that. Uh, and, so Robin, you know, the, the woman's writing all this down. And, and, and when it's all done and then all the stuff about the family is like dead nuts true, Robin gets home and she's like totally crazed. And she's got the note. She calls Trey. And Trey starts sobbing on the phone. He's like, who's Bubba? Bubba? He's talking about me, Mama. He's talking about like this kind of thing, you know. And, we're, and then she calls me and she tells me and she goes, 
and she says there was an, a woman there, like an older woman, that, and she was wearing a, a uniform, and she works with like telephones or something. And I went, Aunt Ruth was in World War II. She was a wave or a whack or something, and she was a telegraph operator. And, and Robin went, what? And I went, yeah, you never knew that. She went, I never in my life knew that. <laughs> Robin wouldn't have even known how to provide those details. So. Um, John Edwards actually <laughs> predicted oh, Trey's. Can you believe it? No. Uh, <laughs> all right. So I'm taking my psychic power and I'm seeing you in a small, comfortable house that someone else has to maintain with a lot of light and woods and a dog. You're smoking a pipe. You're wearing like sweaters. Yeah. I don't know where the pipe came from. You're wearing like sweaters. You're just, you know, you have this amazing life of respect and, and you're, uh, you're doing your podcast and you're supporting yourself and you're happy. That's what I'm going to be looking at for you. Thank you. I'll take you. <laughs> I love it. All right, sweetie. Take care. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> Bye, sweetie.